By the end of this video, you'll know how to do a style of technical drawing within Blender. What's up? I'm Jonathan, and welcome to Maker Tales, where I'm sharing my maker journey to help you go further in yours. So don't forget to subscribe and hit that little bell icon to never miss an opportunity to keep making. This video is all about how to go ahead and create technical drawings within Blender. Yes, they're not exactly technical drawings, but it's the best of what Blender can offer right this minute. I'm going to go through the entire process from making a very simple one to a very complicated one that is linked down in the description. So let's get straight into it. Starting from a fresh Blender file, let's go ahead and learn how to make these technical drawings in Blender. Yes, they're technically not that sort of technically accurate technical drawings, but it's the best that you can do within Blender right this minute. Now, I'm gonna show you two. First, in this video, it's gonna be as simple as simple can be, a nice quick video to try and show you the whole process of it. Now, if you wanna see the full process of a much more complicated model, I also have a full video for that one linked down in the description or in the cards right now. So let's go ahead and let's create the model that we're going to be doing our little technical drawing with. So I'm going to delete everything and bring in a cube and make it 10 millimeters. Now, by the way, if you don't know what I'm doing here, then by all means, I have a full course on Blender Precision Modeling, and that's linked in the description. So let's go ahead. Let's go in here. I'm going to select this face here, bring the 3D cursor to it. Let's also create a cylinder here. And let's change the properties of the cylinder. Let's give this four times the amount of vertices. Let's make the radius 2.5. Let's give it a whole bunch of depth. And I'm sure you already know what I'm going to do here. This is the cutting object for this right here. So I'm just going to go ahead, set this on the X, bring that through like that. That works for me. And we're just going to do a bull cool a bull tool cut. There we go. Now let's just make this a little bit more of an awkward shape by maybe selecting these two vertices up here and going G, Z and moving this up by 2.5. And then let's also, is there anything else? No, I think that's, that's a nice simple shape. Okay. So we have this nice simple-esque shape. Let's go ahead. Let's bring the cursor back to the center here. So cursor to the world origin, and I keep screwing that up. Come on, there we go. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring in a camera because we need a camera to be able to sort of stage this whole technical drawing thing. So the camera has been put in there. I'm going to be doing this from the top view. So I'm gonna hit seven to go to the top view. And now I wanna bring the camera to my view. To do that, I go control alt zero, and that brings the camera to my view. Okay, with that set, we also have this 16 by 9 ratio. So I'm going to select the camera. I'm going to go down to here. I'm also going to change this to orthographic and pull back a bit. All right, don't worry about the positioning just yet. I'm just getting things set up. Now we're also going to go ahead into the items here and change the location to be zero and zero. I just like to work on the zero, zero. You don't have to yourself. And lastly, I want to turn this into a square. So I'm going to go over to the render settings here. I'm going to go 2000 pixels by 2000 pixels. Okay, fantastic. This is now sort of the camera in place. If you really want, and you don't want to accidentally select the camera and all the rest, you can go ahead and turn off the selectability of the camera. Okay, so we have our weird shape thing here. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and rotate this on the X this direction by 90. And then I'm going to rotate it again on the Y by 90 so that I know where I am when I'm up in this top view. So I first want to go ahead and have my sort of representational model up here. Then I'm going to duplicate it, bring it down here, duplicate it again, and bring it over there. So this one, I want to put this in an orientation that I can sort of really get a sense of the model. Now, if you have a really complicated model, you might want to do this in a couple of different ways. You can see that in my one, I've gone ahead and moved it about. So let's see. Let's go R, X, and let's bring this this way. Let's take a look at what percentage we're getting. So I'm going to go for 70 degrees. Oops, maybe not. Let's go 45. Nope, 35. Nope, 
30. You know what? I'm just going to do this a little bit by eye instead. So we're going to go somewhere along there. Then I'm going to rotate this on the local Z. And I think something like that looks pretty good, to be honest. Maybe something a little bit more like this, because then that really shows off the sort of the whole model at once. Okay. Brilliant. So with that now set, that's perfect. Now this one here is a little bit different. I want to go ahead and change this one to be a top view of this because we're trying to get as much viewed as possible. So I'm going to set this to 90 like so. Double check that that's the right orientation. Brilliant. So now we have this sort of set and ready to go. Now I'm going to give myself a little bit of room here. So I'm going to go move that one here move that one over there, move this one somewhere along there. Yeah, that works for me. Now, we're going to be using Measure It, and Measure It is an add-on that sort of comes with Blender. If you want to see how to install it, it's over all down in the description as well. All the useful links are down there. So Measure It is, lives over here in the Measure It underneath the view. And first things first, it likes to work in edit mode. You can do this all as separate objects, but what I like to do is I put these all into one object, all the ones that are going to be having sort of the, all the dimensions. So I'm gonna join these up, so there we go. Now with that joined up, let's go in here. Let's go into edit mode. Let's turn this on by hitting the show. And let's see what happens right this minute if I just select these two here making sure that it's those two right there, and I hit this segment button. I'm just going to pull this out a little bit so we get a look at what's going on. So you can see it's come in meters, it's blue, it's a little bit small. Okay, so let's go ahead and make our life just a little bit easier here. So let's delete that measurement. And over here in the configuration, I'm going to go ahead and set this to a bright green. I want to put the separation to maybe a three. I want to center align all of these, and I want the text size to be, let's say, 25. So now this is the default of what's going to be created. So now you'll see it all changes when I hit segment, and you'll see it's bigger and all the rest, but we still have this meters. Well, that's because we need to now set this right here. So let's change this to millimeters. You can change the precision here. I'm going to keep this to two. Now you can see if you go to text and nothing shows up, well, this is because we haven't got a name for this measurement. Let's go ahead and measure this how high it is. So now that we have high, you can see you can turn this on and off. You can also turn off the distance if you really want. You can also hide the measurement. It's all up to you. You can add the scales. And then there's this weird override that is pretty interesting right at the end, but we're not going to need it for right this minute. Okay, so with that all done, we now understand that this right here is our measurement. So in here are all the settings to go ahead and manipulate this. So we can go ahead and manipulate this a little bit this way and bring it a little bit down. Okay, fantastic. I'm going to now go ahead, select these two here. I like to close down all of these as I go along. If not, it gets a little bit overwhelming. Then I'm going to hit segment, and you know what? It's turned out perfectly fine. Let's go ahead and put in width. I can't spell, so if I don't spell it right, oh well. Um, let's go ahead. Let's bring this down to touch. Brilliant. Now let's go and do another one here. Let's go with the this height right here. Just it's up to you at this point because, like I said, this isn't real technical, so to speak, drawings. This is sort of a a faux technical drawing that you can do within Blender. So as you can see, it's gone a little bit weird here. Let's go ahead and sort this out. So this is, I'll call this height two. Uh, height two, brilliant. And we're gonna go into the settings. Now, right this minute, it's gone like this because we're set it to automatic. If we turn off automatic, you will see that it will just sort of go in the direction that is set here on this X. So if we go here, you can see that all of these have gone a little bit weird and we just didn't notice from that top view. So let's see how do we fix this. Well, first of all, turning off this automatic works and you manually setting the direction that this goes. So I'm going to say minus one. We can also go to these other ones here. We can turn off the automatic and you can see that right this minute, that one's gone all weird. That's because it's going on the X. We'll set that to zero and say on the Y, I want you to go down. And once again, we'll do that the same with this one over here. 
turn off the automatic, and you know what, on the X it's perfectly fine, brilliant. So there we have it. But now we have this thing about this hole. So how are we gonna sort that out? Because we could just say the sort of diameter of the hole, but it doesn't really tell you about the placement really. And what we would like to have is sort of like a central point inside of that hole. So let me just move this text a little bit this way, just because if not, it's going to bug me. And now let's talk about this hole. So the way that I found that works pretty well to do this is to create yourself some geometry. I'm gonna select this edge loop right here. Oops, let's select all of that there, brilliant. I'm then going to bring my 3D cursor to the selection so it's in the center. And then I'm going to add a single vertex in the middle. And then I wanna extrude this out because just a single vertex for some strange reason doesn't give enough geometry for the snapping of measure it. Now don't worry, this isn't gonna come out in the render. So it's sort of literally just a placement object. Now, if you don't have that single vertex, once again, that's an add-on of extra meshes, but still just letting you know all of the add-ons and all that down in the description. So now we've got this here. So let's go ahead and add some measurements. So we can go ahead and click this one and click this over here. Then let's hit segment. Okay, so it's worked, but it's really weird. And how on earth do I get this to a point that I can work with it? All right, so this is where things got a little bit weird. I'm gonna call this hole one, and we're gonna go into the cog here. So first and foremost, let's just turn off this automatic. Brilliant, so far so good. It's looking better, but that still isn't really helping us here. I don't want this to go on the X, I want this to go on the Y. Okay, but we're still angled and I'm pretty sure that wouldn't be the measurement. That is the distance between those two points, but that's not what I'm trying to measure. Okay, so what is that I'm trying to measure? I'm trying to measure the distance along the X. Okay, well, let's turn off the Y, turn off the Z, and there you go. Now you have the distance of the X. Now, if you don't want this little X warning, just turn that off. Now we have this other little thing here. Now, I have never gone ahead and looked at what they call it. They call this the orthogonal. Brilliant, so let's go ahead. In here, you have none A and B. Basically, this is point A, point B. I still haven't figured out which one is which, but I know that if you go into these and then you start clicking around in here and what you're trying to do, you will see that it changes how these snap. So let's go ahead. I'm gonna go to B now and there is the one that I was looking for. So right here on the Y, I'm changing, hey you, I want you to go back up on the Y. And now with that set, we can go ahead, let's move around our line here, sorry, our text, there we go. We can now move our text a little bit, move that there and there, and now we have that distance. Now, once again, we can do this for this right here. So we can go from here to there, now, I'm, I'm doing this on purpose. You're going to see what happens. And we hit segment and nothing happens. Now, the reason why nothing happens here is because these have already been used in the segmentation. You would have to pick two other points. So, for instance, this point and that point, or from this point and that point. That's just the nature of the beast here. It just, that's how it happens within this sort of measure it environment. So let's go ahead, let's do this point here, that point there, let's segment it, and you'll see that it'll work. Now, again, this is now going to be hole two. Let's just quickly apply everything that we've just learned. So we're going in here, we're going to turn off the automatic, we want it to go on the Y, we're setting the X to zero. Now we're saying we only want to know the distance of the Y. So let's turn off the X, the Z, I don't want to know about the warning. And do I want this to go? Have I gone somewhere wrong here? Why? Oh, I want this to go on the X, that's why, sorry. Let's change that like that. And now we're wanting to move this across. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm also gonna go ahead and we're gonna to go to this very first one here and move this distance out a bit. So it gives it some breathing room. And let's close that back up. So in here, we're gonna go, let's see, was it B that worked well last time? There it is, B, we're moving our B location to the X, and now we can go ahead and move these numbers about. 
That's not the one. I always get confused between those two. Fantastic. You know what? I'm going to also go ahead back up to this other value here. Let's move this up and let's also just bring this distance down like so or something like that. It's up to me really how you feel like doing this. There's 101 different ways to do it, but it's up to you. Okay, so that's that. There's only one real, well, two real dimensions that are left here. This is the diameter of this and the width of that. So let's just quickly do the width of this because that will take no time at all. So let's go here, segment that. Now you can see it's gone a little bit weird. And why is that? Well, that's because this is an angled line. So keep in mind, so this is an angled line. So that number is wrong. So we need to do everything that we've just done for the other one. So I'm just going to put it in here and call it width two. Width two. We have to do everything that we've just done for the holes, but for this line so that we're getting the right distance. So we don't need the Y. We don't need the Z. We're only looking for the X. We turn off that warning. We're going to move this on turning off automatic. We're moving this on the Y upwards on the X nothing. And technically, that can work from this angle, but we're still, it, it's, it's not perfect. It's up to you if you want to carry on, because from here, what we go is go and play around with these A, B things to get the right one that we're wanting to achieve here. But having said that, this is the exact same result you're going to get. It doesn't matter which angle, because this is still a straight line right this minute. All right, so with that, put in place there. Let's go ahead and do the last one of this diameter. Now, there's many ways of doing this. I find that I don't like to sort of explain this as a radius. I very much like to just grab the two points from one end to the other end and just work with that. Make sure that you're grabbing these two and not one up here and one down there. So with those two, now captured like so, we can go ahead and hit segment. We can then go ahead and call this diameter, diam, and then we're gonna go ahead and pull this down on the Y, I think. So automatic, let's go Y downwards, X doesn't matter to me. Let's give it some more distance so it's down here. And then let's go ahead and move the text down like so. Okay, fantastic. So now we're at this stage right here, which is a pretty solid stage, right? You think that this is looking really good and all that. So let's go ahead and get this rendered out. So first and foremost, save. So I'm gonna save this quickly. And with that now saved, you can see that if you really wanted to, you could just go ahead and do a screenshot from here. Now I'm gonna go ahead and render all this out. Now there's a whole bunch more now with rendering. So let's go over to our render engine render engine, excuse me. And instead of EV, I quite like using cycles. Okay, so we turn on cycles. We're gonna go over to our render preview here and it looks really bad. Okay, let's go ahead and let's add some lights now. So let's quickly move our mouse back to the world origin. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to bring in a uh, light now. So we're gonna go light, an area light. Okay, so we have this area light. Now this area light is very small. Let's go to the settings of the area light here. And let's just increase the size. I'm gonna go with 100. So it's a nice big light. So you can see we've got this nice big light and going into our 3D view, you can see that it's perfectly flat there. So that's not quite what we're wanting. Let's go G, Z and pull this up. Now, what I like to do here is go ahead and do our movement on the 3D cursor now. And then I go R, and we can go rotate this on the Y, go this direction, about 45 degrees. And there we go. We have one light there. Now I like to go shift D, right click R on the Y as well, and pull this back to this side here. Now, why am I doing this? Because when we go here into our view, we now have these two lights. So I'm gonna call this the fill light. And we're also gonna have this one here, which will be, the backlight. Okay, so now that we have those two differentiated, we can go to the fill light and start changing the settings here. So let's go with one, that's a bit much. Let's go 0 0.1 and that's looking all right. Okay, so we've got 0 0.1 on there and then let's get this 
fill backlight, let's go 0 0.05 and see how that goes. Okay, there we go. That's the backlight now filling things up nicely for us. But you know what? This is looking a little bit boring. So let's go ahead, let's select both of these. Let's go to our material settings, create a new material, and let's make this, I don't know, uh, a pretty purple. There we go. So we've got this nice purple look here. Now, if you're not too happy with the, how the lighting is turning out here, you can go ahead and change this however you're wanting. I'm going to just quickly grab this one here because I'm not too happy with that being that dark. And I'm going to rotate this on the Y just so that it's a little bit more like so. There we go. So now we have this nice little gradient look on there. This is quite hot, but it's just for the all sakes of purpose of showing this off. Let's go ahead. Let's set this one to purple there. And now we have this set like that. So let's go ahead. Let's hit render and let's render this out. So with this rendering out, we're starting to see, okay, what's going on here? We have this gray background, but our, all of our things aren't there. What's going on? This isn't what I'm wanting. Okay. First and foremost, rendering for measure it is completely different, but let's break this down. We have just rendered our camera view. Great. That is something we're needing. Now you'll see here over on measure it, there is also another render. Let's hit render here and just leave it to do its thing. There, it's rendered out. But now where do I see this? So there's many ways of seeing this, but for now I want to take you over to here, which is our compositing. We're going to click in here and I want to change this bottom one over to an image editor. So we're changing this to an image editor just so that we can see what's going on here. You can see we have our render result, which is the image that we just rendered. And then we have our measure it output, which is right here. Okay, but what's going on here? Like our lines aren't showing. It's what's what what's happening? Let's go and do two things. Let's first set up what we're doing here, which is compositing this image on top of our render. So we're going to say use nodes. We're going to go over here and we're going to create a couple of nodes here. So we're going to create a viewer. Fantastic. Then we're also going to go ahead and create an alpha over. Now what's an alpha over? You'll see in a moment. Let's also create an image here. Okay, so now we have this image, alpha over, and viewer. So we're wanting to see this final end result image. We're wanting to see the image that comes out from here. And we're wanting to put this over that image. Okay. Now what's happening here? Well, this one hasn't been defined yet. So let's go ahead and set this to be our measure it. Okay, there we go. Our measure it has now been seen. You couldn't see it here because it was, wasn't was high enough resolution, so to speak. So right this minute, you can see that this image is very large. If you want to change that, hit our viewer. You can hit this middle bit and then you can scale this down. Be careful that scaling it down, it changes the actual resolution of the image that you're viewing. So you might not actually be able to see what it really, the end result is going to look like. But you know what? This gray background, I'm not a big fan of it. So let's go ahead and change that. So I'm going to go over to our layout once again. We're going to go to the render settings. I'm going to go to film, turn on transparency. There we go. Now we're being transparent. So let's go ahead. Let's re-render this image out. So now we're rendering this out, but the background is no longer there. So we can set our own background. So once this has been rendered out, let's go back over to our compositing. And you will see that we no longer have a background. Now this is a problem because we sort of need a background. Well, you know what? Let's go and grab another alpha over. So we got another alpha over. We put it here in the middle. Now you see this is the wrong way around. We've got to flip these two around and now we've got this. So here we can go ahead and change the color of it. So let's go for something nice and dark. There we go. Now I want to just quickly point out that there is something else to watch out for when it comes to measure it. And let's go ahead and just show you. So the easiest way that I found that I got myself in trouble a couple of times, if I go ahead and set this resolution to, I don't know, let's set this just to 100. 
So it's a really low resolution, right? Then I'm going to go ahead and hit a render. Now that I've rendered at 100 pixels by 100 pixels, I'm also going to go ahead and render out my cube. As you see, it's teeny tiny right this minute. Now what's going to happen over in our compositor? Well, it is teeny tiny and our text is huge. So does that make sense what's just happened? Now, if one of the ways that I find that works pretty well is having to go here into our measure it, make sure that we change this up and put the measure it back on just to double check that everything is right here. So this here isn't representational of what's going on because this here thinks it is gigantic, thinks it's like teeny, teeny, tiny. Now, what happens if we go the other direction? Let's say 6,000 by 6,000. Now, I'm going to go ahead and render this out, and then I'll come back to you. So I'm hitting render here. I'm just quickly saving my project before I do anything else. I'm going to go over to my rendering tile properties because I've realized that I've got to go over here and let's just times this by five, no, by eight, because I've got a decent enough, enough graphics card to be able to do that. And then let's go ahead and I'm going to go ahead and render our gigantic scene here now. Going over back to our compositor, you can see this image is absolutely gigantic now and it doesn't really feel like it can be managed. So go over to your view and hit fit. And this way you're going to be able to see what's happened. So as you can see, we have something a little bit different going on now, which is our text is absolutely tiny. So at this point, if you're really wanting to create a very high resolution image of this, you can. But what you've got to do is take note of where everything is right this minute. So right this minute, we're cutting in on the M like so. So now you've got to scroll into the point that we're sort of like cutting into the M like so, and then just start to go ahead and play around with the configuration, or more importantly, go over Two, we've got to make sure that this is selected, the override here, and start playing around with the this override of the width of the line that you're wanting to deal with, with the font size that you're wanting to deal with, as well as where exactly you're wanting all this to be. Now, playing around with those, you're going to get the desired result. Now, the longer video definitely does have a lot more information about this. But now, with that done, we have this lovely little thing here. I'm going to go ahead, just put things back to 2000, 2000 and come back to you. And here we have it. This is back to the scale that I wanted, which is 2000 pixels by 2000 pixels. And with that there, you can go ahead and render this out. Well, render it out, bring it out. So you can go select the viewer, go to item, hit save image there, or you can go over down here in our view editor and you can also find the view node here and go file save image as from there. And there you have it. That's how to go ahead and create these technical style-esque drawings within Blender. Of course, you now have a Blender in your hand, so you can go ahead and use modifiers like wireframe and create the geometry of the actual mesh itself. You can go crazy with this because you can really bring in the rendering aspect of Blender into your faux technical drawings. A huge thank you to my patrons. You guys are absolutely awesome. And it's the reason why I'm able to make these videos completely for free. And I absolutely love your support. And if you think I'm worthy of your support and you're enjoying what I'm making here, I would love to see you there too. Thank you for watching. Keep making and let the quest continue.